Um, my uh, introduction into sustainability was really a result of, uh, for lack of a better word, selfish purposes. Um, I was at one point the operating officer, chief operating officer for the 34th America's Cup uh, in San Francisco, and we were mandated by the city to deliver uh, the most sustainable big event that had ever been hosted in the United States. It was one of the conditions of the city accepting us. And as part of trying to unpack that challenge, uh, as a group of people who didn't have any real experience with that topic, I mean, we've spent our whole careers, I had spent most of my career in sports, either as an athlete or as, a, uh, you know, as an executive. And so how are we going to include this theme you know, into this big international event, which was the 34th America's Cup in San Francisco uh, in 2013? And the, the big uh, you know, issue for us was that or what we learned, the biggest thing we really learned was the fact that you can solve sustainability issues if you have the desire. But the part of the argument that's always missing, or in, in one, of the, one of the reasons why the sustainability industry in general has been slow to evolve and get to where we are today, frankly, I mean, this could have happened decades ago, if it would have been spoken about in the context of risk mitigation and ROI, balancing your short-term needs with your longer-term sustainable development initiatives. Uh, which is why the founders of the Sustainable Development Goals were so genius in including the word development. It doesn't mean that you have to be perfect overnight, but it does mean that you have to have a target of where you want to get to and be open and transparent about that, right? And so a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to pretend uh, instantly because they have to that everything's perfect. But in reality, we're all human. We know no one is perfect. We can get to where we want to be by being transparent. And transparency actually invites people to come along that journey with you. So one of the challenges that a lot of cities face um, you know, is this issue of how do I get people engaged? Right? I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough uh, you know, through America's Cup and through the solutions that we were able to put in place there uh, to have then consulted and worked with a number of municipalities around the world. I, I spent a, about two years working closely with the United Smart Cities um, and, uh, and then also obviously continuing with sporting events and sports organizations. And one of the consistent things that I've heard over the last decade, when me, especially meeting with municipal leaders, is you know, we understand the sustainable transformation game from the point of view of getting legislation passed and organizing funds for infrastructure projects, it might be frustratingly slow, uh, but at least we understand how that game works. One of the things that on every continent that people struggle with is how do we get our citizens engaged? How do we get people to understand what these issues are and care about these issues and understand why it's important you know, for the community? Um, and so over the years, you know, listening to organizations struggle with this topic around how do I even start? And it doesn't matter if it's a city or a company or a nonprofit. How do we even get started with, uh, you know, with heading in this direction? And uh, so what we did at the end of the day through the last eight years of consulting was to create a program that would achieve two things. Number one was to actually accelerate that transformation, make it easier for people to unpack, understand the fundamentals, and then make it really easy for them to get started on this path. Now, luckily, over the last two to three years, I think we've all seen the rapid explosion of this term impact investing and how corporations have really started to embrace this, uh, this, this movement towards not only having a corporate social responsibility report that articulates kind of what they're doing very loosely, but to actually having that backed up by concrete data, concrete analysis, and being really serious about working towards these goals that are so important for all of our futures, frankly. So uh, we, I created this program together with BDO, uh, which is one of the larger uh, accounting uh, consultancy advocacy companies in the world, um, specifically because we wanted to not accelerate just on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? So for eight years, I've been doing consulting on a one-on-one -on -one basis, helping organizations to understand how to embrace these topics and these themes from a brand point of view, from an ROI point of view, and take those little incremental baby steps to get on the right path. So you don't have to sacrifice your short-term objectives with where you want to go uh, in terms of your longer-term goals regarding sustainability. And so uh, we wanted that program to actually accelerate at scale. So how can we get more people involved to really create a movement? Uh, and so that is the reason why we created this program uh, that I'm about to explain. It's also very focused on the concept of alignment. So starting off by getting your community together from all different sectors, uh, talking about 
what are the big issues? So taking a holistic approach, what are the big issues that this community, this region is going to face in the next 20 years? So we assembled from a group with, that included, this, this, this is in Bodo, Norway, we, in 2019. We assembled a group that included the football team, the city, which was instrumental in this, uh, and we'll hear from Silke in a moment because she's uh, kindly joining us from Bodo. Um, we invited 10 of the largest businesses in the Bodo region, and we brought everybody together, and we started off from the point of view of a simple alignment, right? So there's all the frameworks and all the different sort of processes and techniques for how a city can start on this process, but it can be quite overwhelming. So going from a very simple starting point, let's just get representatives from the community together and let's see what we can create in a co-working environment. So started off by then identifying, all right, what are, the, what are the biggest issues that we're going to have to deal with in the next 20 years in this region, regardless of where we work, uh, you know, we all live here, we raise our kids here, so these, are, these issues are going to affect all of us. So we better have a plan for how to, how to solve them. Uh, and by having that very simple starting point of creating a common alignment around the issues that are coming, uh, it's amazing how you break down silos to communication, how you start to identify new partnerships and new pathways for coming together, and actually approach your business relationship from a problem-solving point of view. So looking at the graph that I have on the screen, uh, every city in the world has a sports organization at the heartbeat of its city. Every single one of them. And what, going back to that point I made earlier around how difficult it is for cities to get their citizens to engage, well, the easiest way to engage with people is to communicate with them from a point of passion. And sp sports and music are both passion-based forms of communication. So that's how you can actually get people's attention and get them to care and educate them in the process which means that sport itself is a totally underutilized asset when it comes to regional and municipal infrastructure transformation or sustainable transformation in general. Because sport sits at the center of this sort of healthy ecosystem. If you think about it from the point of view that the sports industry as a platform is working directly with the business industry on a daily basis. They're obviously working directly with the government because they have physical uh, assets like stadiums and parks and facilities, but also in many times as a tourism uh, you know, promotion for the city is one of the reasons why you would want to be there. Uh, and then obviously it is a passion voice to the, to the community. So when you look at sport from a strategic point of view and you think about how to leverage it from the point of view of bringing these different sectors of a society together and get them aligned and from the point of view of taking action that's how you can really start to make a measurable difference uh, and start to get towards those sort of sustainable development goals that your organization or that your region needs to achieve. Um, so very quickly, um, I like to think of it, again, because this is action and results oriented and it's designed to be immediate with an ROI focus. Um, so basically taking all of this different uh, data and all these different things that we're supposed to be doing, breaking it down into, and unpacking it into very simple actionable steps and so I like to think of it as almost sustainable transformation business school, where we, uh, like literally just using very simple, easy to understand business terms, walk people through the steps, where we talk about it from the point of view of communication and marketing, branding, uh, tracking and reporting and data, integrated reporting, just very, very simple steps with very concrete results. And, and doing that in the group setting where people are collaborating with one another, whether you're in the municipality or a for-profit or a non-profit business or with a sports organization, uh, it's a very powerful uh, you know, sort of process to go through and that's the reason why we've had such wonderful success with it. On an individual basis, uh, we break it down basically taking people through that whole transformational process and giving them the tools and the resources to be able to, uh, to, be able to get to very specific steps. And it's wonderful hearing you know, innovative leaders uh, you know, like the uh, president of, of Unilever, I just was listening to a, a webinar with him last week, you know, talk about how they have moved even to the point of where their compensation packages are now going to be based also on, um, uh, on, on impact measurements, not only on specific revenue performance of the business. Um, so very innovative, cool things coming in this direction. Now, what's happened since we did the pilot program in Bodo, Norway uh, a year ago is that the uh, football team and the city have both been able to successfully position themselves as leaders, not only within Norway, but also internationally with regards to what is possible for sustainable transformation when you adopt a holistic approach. Um, not coincidentally, the karma around the club with their Action Now program, this is an image of them playing at uh, San Siro, uh, just recently in Europa Cup qualification and they were, they were able to score first and because they had their Action Now logo on the back of their shirt, they got an unbelievable amount of media attention and questions around, oh, what does that mean and what is happening? And since we did this program last year, now the program has spread to six other cities in Norway. 
And it's now spreading as we are expanding it into other countries because it works. And, uh, and with that, I'd be so happy to hand over and let uh, my good friend Silke from the Bodo Municipality.